Welcome back, everybody, to the WWTF Wrestling with the Faith podcast, um, where we're a group of people that we look at, at Bible passages in the world today and see how the Bible relates to our modern lives and, and see what we can be doing to help spread and live God's word. Um, my name is Evan. And I'm joined, as always, by Dave, Laurel, Jesse, and Ben. Um, and we are going to be discussing uh, Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16, and 20 through 24. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they, there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away, I will save my flock and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. You know, we were starting to talk before we started recording tonight that, you know, especially with with the time of year and just coming through an, an election, especially something kind of in turmoil, this is speaking speaking to the fact that, you know, God, God is looking over us and is, is going to have the shepherd that will help lead us and really protect and, and champion the weak, which, um, Jesse, as you were saying, some of your research and kind of looking into all of this is really what, you know, what we think a lot of our leaders should be doing is is looking after those beneath them and helping to raise them up so both as leaders and you know us us day-to-day folk should a i mean to me i think we should be holding every holding everybody accountable so that they are you know living to that and and helping to raise everybody up but then even in our day-to-day lives you know we can go around, you know, what are things that we can do to help, help lift those up beneath us instead of, you know, shouldering people out of the way. So here, here we are talking about the, um, what, what do they call them? The fat and powerful. Is that what they, is that what he calls them? The, yeah, I think he'll, so. He'll, he'll destroy them and he'll help, the weak and the injured uh, sheep. <clears throat> so that doesn't seem to happen a lot. I mean, you mentioned politics. That doesn't really seem to happen a lot with our political leaders, right, frankly. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to take that other than, <clears throat> you know, kind of in the New Testament where we've talked in the past about Jesus saying the same thing about the people who are fat and happy, basically, uh, who are the leaders of the day, and they're not really helping anybody but themselves, and, and he's warning of the same thing, and, and Ezekiel's warning, warning of it 
you know, many, many years before. I don't know how realistic it is to expect any politician to follow this perfectly. Yes, we want our leaders to try to do this, but I don't think either candidate, especially this year, <laughs> either of those candidates, um, I, I don't think are going to follow this mentality perfectly um, just because we're human beings. But God is. And I think that's the main takeaway from this is it describes God's love for us and how much he cares. He cares about the ones straying away. Um, you know, if you're weak, he'll bring you back up. Yeah. yeah so I kind of struggle with this a little because I, whenever, whenever I read this in the past, I've always thought of, you know, God's going to take care of, of all of his, his sheep in some um special way and so it, it it kind of like it feels like um uh he's saying uh, if if you're mine i will treat you so much better and and i will i will be your good shepherd and that that's you know so so it, it you know i think people who have read this passage just that well if i'm a christian or it, in this case in these cases if i'm a jew from from uh you know judea i will I'll be, I'm treated well because I'm, I'm already one of his. And that feels almost like, Hey, we're in, right. We're in and God's going to take care of us. Um, as opposed to somebody else who's maybe fat and happy and, uh, isn't going to be taken care of. So I, I don't know if I, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, is it possible to be fat, happy, and a good Christian, probably not, because that's Clearly. probably. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not literally, like metaphorically speaking, because the metaphor is being fat and happy is probably fat as in you're full of yourself, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree that. Yeah. I mean, as as Christians, maybe we shouldn't be fat and happy. I mean, I, I think we can obviously be very, very happy. And, you know, a lot of the times we are, especially with all that he's given us for, to be where we are, you know, even today. But I think if, if we were to get in a, a position where you could be or be close to being, you know, in the, meta, the metaphorically fat, that you know we should i mean obviously we're all human humans but um you, you know it should should be looking to use that position or the, that um that privilege that you have and seeing how you, you can give back because i mean calling back to the one episode we're talking about uh giving back to god what's god's is you know, if he, he's he's granted us to be, whether it's wealthy or talented or whatever it may be, is going back to give that back to the rest of rest of the flock. And again, whether it's it's the lost or injured or the weak, you know, bringing people back and showing people's God's love. You know, in the second part, he kind of accuses the the uh, fat and happy sheep, if you will, I guess that's what we're calling them, of bumping everybody out, like bumping the skinnier sheep out and kind of pushing them away from everyone else. You know, and if you think about it in society, how we, like mainstream society, pushes people to the fringes and uh, in that, you know, um, you know, Jesus' main message has been, go and rescue the people in the fringes, right? Go help them, you know, stop thinking about yourself and your, your neighbor who's fine and start thinking about people who are on, in the fringes. And, and so, you know, even back in Ezekiel there, you know, that's conference is this idea of being in the middle where you're content and you've got everything you need. Don't push people out and, you know, go, he's going to go rescue those people at the fringes. 
Yeah, I, and I think especially with today's day and age and, you know, social media and everything, you see a lot of the spread of, or a lot more, I think, awareness of some of the people on the fringe and especially some of the conditions they may be living in or, or that they may be at. And even as we were talking about, you know, I forget, <laughs> forget which one a couple of weeks ago of, you know, sometimes it can be those people on the fringes or people you wouldn't expect that are truly living, you know, the way in, in God's way or in, in kind of God's or Jesus's manner where some people, you know, even, even Christians, you know, we sit our butts in a few, but we may be, not be going out to, to truly live that way. Um, so it, it could be that the people on the fringes are, whether they realize it or not, or it's purposeful, maybe kind of seeing or maybe, maybe kind of closer to walking that path, I guess. Um, so it makes me wonder that, you know, we go to us going out to help them, which, you know, is what God's leading us to do could then bring us back to God because we can experience people that may be close, close to that path in a sense, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, think about this. It's so much easier to be in the middle of the pack with the rest of the sh sheep, right? You're just living your life. You're not, you're not on the edge. You're not, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> and you know, that's that's comfortable and makes you fat and happy, sort of, you know, because you're just in the middle and you're just doing your thing and and happy. Uh, whereas, you know, people on the edges are living life in a different way and and um, and pushing them out there, um, it, you know, just because work is kind of what he's kind of railing against, if you will, is that, you know, he's going to go out and find those folks. And certainly what Jesus does in the, in the New Testament. So is he almost trying to say then, like, if you want anything done right or done properly, you got to try and go out yourself and do it? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, if you want something good to happen, do you need to go along and then kind of herd in your own sheep and make make something happen? Yeah, I, I, and when I think about the you know sheep on the, the edge and you know how they feel like pushed out. So my sister, so you know how like every once in a while we'll go down to uh, the homeless shelter and like feed folks and we'll and we'll prepare foods and stuff like. That. Okay. My sister actually uh, lives in Texas, and she um, they do the same kind of thing, but, but they actually, um, a group of them go out and eat the meal sitting at the table with everyone, with all the folks that are, live in the shelter, because they found that these folks, even when you went down and, like, you went down and you prepared, brought food and prepared food and served it to them and, you know, isn't this great, they still didn't feel part of you. They didn't feel part of the herd, if you will, or the, you know, whatever, what do you call a group of sheep? I don't even know what you call it, but anyway, a flock. A flock. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely Laurel. Um, so, so that, that uh, you don't feel part of that. And so they sat down and started eating with them and related to them a lot more. And it, it was more of a kind of a experience where they brought them into the flock as opposed to just feeding them and, oh, look what we're doing for these folks, which is, is meaningful and great in its own way. But, but it was more than that because they sat down and, and they were people. They were people to them. And, and um, you know, we do less and less than that as, as, a, as a community, you know, in general. And, and so, yeah, just that, that act of bringing them in. Kind of acknowledging that they're people too and, I mean, and and going with that, I mean, most of the time when you go to sit down for dinner, you're sitting with your family. So going and sitting with them, hey, we're all family. We're going to eat and talk and get to know each other and everything then. So, yeah, yeah. I agree. Probably not easy to do right now during COVID, right. but, you know, yeah. in the future. Um, but that really is – Feeling that feeling of family, the feeling of they're you know you're all in it together kind of thing. 
obviously, like you said, right now, you know, COVID, we need trying to take the proper precautions, you know, to make sure everybody's safe. But is that, you know, do we think it is calling us to go in and, you know, sit down with some of those people on the fringe? Um, it's like, what do we think this is calling us to do? Well, I think it's still the same warning siren and that we've all heard uh, through many of the thing, topics we've covered here, and that is the people who think they have it all together and have it so nice are not necessarily the people God is most worried about and wants us to be most worried about. It's really the people on the fringes, the people scattered to the hills, as they say in this. Those are the folks that, that are really the ones that, uh, that God's thinking about and what we should be thinking about. Yeah, I say before, I think, that um, yeah, powerful line that you know we shouldn't be basically probably comes down to just not being selfish. I mean, just thinking about someone other than yourself, and that includes people, the sheep that are scattered or whatever. So early on, when I read this too, I I used to think you know when am because I've been that scattered sheep throughout my life a few times a few times to say the least and so i've always thought well god will come and get me at some point so i don't know if that's because i grew up you know i grew up in a family you know of christians so for me you know that was kind of like drilled into my head that don't worry whether you turn your back for a little while or not god's going to come get you uh, and hook you with that you know what's that sheep little hook thing called you know that you know uh, whatever, but you know, the staff or, yeah. And kind of like hook you and bring you back. And so, uh, I kind of always thought that even when I strayed around in my life and went crazy different directions. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, yeah, I mean, having that, having that thought is, you know, he will always guide you back to where you need to be or where he wants you to be. So to me, that's, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of people have troubles or maybe a little, I mean, fear, maybe not fear, but a little scared of, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone. I mean, I know there's certainly a lot of things that would fit that boat for me. Um, but it's something to keep in mind that, you know, we should be going and stepping out of our comfort zone so that we can truly reach out to those people on the fringe and, you know, whatever, however we may do it, knowing you've got that, you know, basically his hand on your back, like you got this, uh, I'll, I'll help guide the way. Um, you know, it's reassuring, even if <laughs> that fear still tries to kind of overtake you a bit. Um, so uh, you know, I still try to think of, you know, especially, <laughs> Obviously, you gotta maybe need to be a bit more creative nowadays with you know quarantining and COVID and just trying to be safe and healthy and looking after everybody is trying to think what is that way we can reach out. So is it you know still going to the shelters? Is it you know do we try to look at whether it's at you know, whether at our church building or wherever else, is it trying to set up something that you're trying to draw, whether, trying to somehow reach out to those people and sit down and, you know, like you said, sit down and talk to them, you know, acknowledge that they are part of God's family. That kind of makes me think of um, – people who are in nursing homes right now or hospitals right now and can't be with their families. Um, I could see how they could all be feeling left out now. Yeah. Good point, Ben. I was thinking about that. People, um, yeah, people that are by themselves normally, but certainly now it's even more so. But yeah. People in nursing homes or that live by themselves or yeah, it's tough. I know we've tried to reach out a, a little bit to, send notes and, you know, phone calls to people. I guess that's something. 
Say up there. I mean, obviously, for reaching out to some of those fringes, or especially like some of the people in, in um, whether it's hospice or in the hospital or whatever, obviously, you can't always just make random calls to to people. But are there? I mean, I'm sure there are. are but do, do we know of any? I guess whether it's programs or something, or is that something we can look into starting as being able to write, you know, letters even just to, to send to random people and you kind of start pen, basically pen pal programs mm -hmm. uh, with some of those kind of folk to, you know, it may be at least a first step to start building that relationship or that, that bridge and kind of bringing everybody together. Are we aware of anything through, you know, through Prince of Peace that, that does something similar? Well, they have, we have lists of people that, that uh, people call just to check up on because Laurel's in that group. She, yeah. she actually checks up on people. Calls. Just <laughs> to people that haven't uh, attended things lately, just to kind of check in. But that's only for our group, only yeah. for our church, not, our church. not strangers who, who don't have a church or don't have a family or, or anyone around anymore. And they have got to be so lonely. Right. Good question. I don't know how to. Yeah, it might be something out there, but I don't know. Yeah. So I guess I mean, uh, for us and and for you know anybody watching or listening too, is you know probably could be a quick Google search. Or I mean, if you're part of a congregation somewhere, I mean, you can talk to you know the staff of the office, see if there's something going on probably a fairly quick Google search to try and some, find something or, you know, if there isn't anything that we can find, you know, even, even in ours and through Prince of Peace, it could be reaching out, you know, finding a contact somewhere at, you know, one or any of the local hospitals or, or um, hospice centers or something to reach out and just say, you know, hey, we want to try doing this. I mean, it's letter writing. So whether it's the people themselves that we're reaching out to are able to write or if they need, they may need someone to dictate or dictate to, um, you know, that could be something we can look into to, to start reaching out to people. So is that our mission for, for the week is to um, go find the lost sheep that are lonely because of COVID and yeah. find a way to reach them? Yeah, I think, I think that's a good homework assignment for everybody. Um, you know, both for us and everybody, you know, listening is reach out to, uh, to whether it's if you're part of a church or um, – if you you know a local hospital or center near you is reach out and see if there's already an existing program or if you can just you know write a letter basically write a letter introducing yourself to somebody and say hey I want to I want to check in and I hope you're doing well and the, start start that conversation with them Remind remind everybody that God is there and and He's watching out for you. You know, as always, we've been you know just a group of people from Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Westlake, so Westlake, Ohio. So if if you have any thoughts or feedback, or if you have any groups that you're aware of, whether it's local or if it's you know a national or global or whatever level it may be. Let us know whether it's in the comment section here on YouTube or if you're listening to it, find us through, through social media and let us know whether you have ideas or let us know if you have been starting to talk to anybody and, and where that relationship has gone. So have, have a great week. Go out, find someone to talk to everybody. <laughs>